Okay, friends, this is your technology information channel. Okay, a lot of uh, nerds and technical minded people know me on the Saber World as PC Cure Mon. It was a name I designed many years ago, PC Cure Mon. I also cover Linux, MacBooks, mobiles, and etc. Basically, anything to do with technology. Okay, so one is 10. Okay, in front of you, and now we're going to do a few simple help videos for things that matter to people every day as they use their computers. So, if you've ever had a problem with your graphics card or your drivers, okay, there's a number of things you can do. Okay, so we want to go to basically the device manager. Okay, so what we can do is we can open the control panel. Now Windows 10 things have changed over the past where the control panel might not be as handy to see or use. So if you go to your search bar in the left and type in control, you'll see your control panel here. You can right click on it and you can pin it to the taskbar which I've already done. Okay, so if you open up your control panel here and if you go to change it from categories to large icons okay you do have what they call administration tools you also want to go to the device manager okay so if you open up your device monitor and you've got a problem with your computer or your driver for example if your wi-fi has stopped working okay you can go back to your connections your internet adapters here Okay, now if you click at the top V by type or by connections, if you click by connections, you get a better a list to make it handier. By default, it is set by type. So if you're having a problem with an adapter, if you double click on it here, it'll say this device is disabled. Okay, so enable the device and click next and click finish now if you're having a problem go to driver you can try and update the driver by clicking update search for drivers automatically off microsoft website or if you download the driver manually you can browse your computer to the file also if you can have problems with your drivers and you get the option here was highlighted to roll back the driver so basically if you've updated a driver in the past and it has caused a problem with your keyboard, your Wi-Fi, or your network adapter, or etc. You can click roll back the driver. Okay, so that's a handy tip for fixing your driver devices. Obviously, this would be your display graphics card. You can also double click on it. Click driver and you can update the driver. Okay. Some people use third party tools and unfortunately sometimes with third party tools it causes a problem when you update your drivers the next month it doesn't work. Okay so if we go to administration tools here on Windows 10. Now most of this here to geeks or tech magnet people is pretty simple but this is for people that don't understand. Okay so when you go to our control panel by default it'll be set like this to make it handier large icons and click administration tools now here you have quite a number of administration tools you've got component services computer management defragmentation on optimized drives a disk cleanup event viewer now the event viewer friends is basically to give you an idea, your computer logs any errors that you come across. So for an example, if you've been trying to update your Windows 10 to the latest to the latest Windows update that was brought out before Christmas to you it and it's not installed, well then you will get a number of errors here. So sometimes the Microsoft scanners will use the event viewer as a con because it automatically picks up It automatically picks up 
errors okay so example if I went to the system on here it'll come up as warnings okay so I would have to do a bit of research on that there if I didn't understand what it was okay so sometimes that the con men use the event viewer basically to bluff you as if you've got a virus okay Okay, so some of these services will be turned off by default for a reason. Your performance monitor is basically to give you what it says. Okay, now there's a number of ways to get to this. And you can also adjust it if you know what you're doing through the registry settings. Okay, basically, where you're, if it's an up-to-date computer and you've got 16 gigs of memory, there is ways of uh, expanding your memory to 32 gigs free. A lot of manufacturers won't tell you that because they don't want to lose money. So there is videos out on the tech world on how to expand your memory. There's hidden memory inside your memory sticks. Okay, so performance monitor will give you your processor information on etc. Recovery drive. To recreate a recovery drive for your computer. Your registry editor, there's a number of ways of getting to it. Okay. Now, do not mess about with your registry settings unless you know what you're doing. Because you can cause yourselves headaches. Okay. Now, there's other ways to get to it. If I want to start, I typed in REG, E D A T. I can bring up the registry editor. Okay, sometimes the Reg the other is a handy tool to have. Let me go back here. And this is just to give you an idea. A lot of people use Windows 10 operating systems and many others. And to this day, they don't understand half the stuff that's in it. So when you learn, you're also able to get yourselves out of a fix. Okay, so that would be your local machine, drivers, software. That would be a list of software I would have on my computer. So which I could also remove a piece of software if I want it. Okay, so let me see here. That's a super anti spyware. I can right click on it and I can modify it. Okay, and I can change the volume on Accenture. So that would be your Rad Street Saddens. Your Resources Monitor, I think you're going to see. Okay, so this is your Resources Monitor. Okay, so these would be your processes running here. That would be the threads, and that would be the CPU, and the status that it's running on Accenture. Now, if you're not sure what a particular one is, this is another way to learn. If I highlight the dillhost.x, I right click. I can search online to find out exactly what it is. Once I do my research, then obviously I can end the process. Okay, so when a hacker gets access to your system, they will show up in the process manager. Okay, probably hidden under a program. And etc. So it's telling me at the minute I'm using 60%, 52% of my CPU. And these would be the threads. Now, this would be the CPU itself. This would be the disk. And this would be the network system. Okay, so an overview. You will see a diagram of your CPU here. You'll see your, your disk reading. You'll also see one of your network and also one of your memory. So some people might be surprised that I know all this stuff because I've been on it for many, many years. And of course I have come across the network drives that were maliciously hacked. And of course I was able to repair them. 
And of course I was questioned by an idiot. Oh, how did you fix them network drives? I'm with the technology 16 years. And this was the clampet that works for a contractor for BT. Little does he know what I know he is. And with a couple of kiddies that were given a few programs and pointed in the right direction. So I basically said to him, if you're there 16 years, you need to go back and learn more. Okay, so that would be your memory friends here. And if you notice, I'm using what I'm in use here, physical memory, and what's available to me. Okay, so it might be a bit difficult for some people to understand. These would be your services. Okay. Every computer has services, okay? Every computer has services. Let me give you a better screenshot. And let me go to stage three. Okay, so every every operating system, Windows 10, Windows 7, XP, Vista has got services, okay? And these services all play a part of your operating system. Now, many years ago when XP was brought out, whenever Windows up released a Microsoft released an update, it closed a certain service. Now, some of these services are running by or set by most of these services are set by default and some are turned off. But when you understand what the service does, it can also be used as an exploit where someone can get access to your computer. And by learning it, you can actually disable some of the services and secure your system a lot more than, okay. So example, if you happen to download a security product on your computer, a third party, or you happen to run ABT or Advanced System Cure, some of these programs will close some of the services for you. But by learning them, you can also close them yourself. Now to give you an example, obviously this one here would be classed for iTunes, okay? And when you click on it, you'll get a description here, enables hardware devices and software to automatically configure themselves to a network. Okay, so this particular one I have disabled it is part of iTunes, Apple iTunes, and if I wanted to turn it on, there's a number of ways I could do it. I could right click, and I could go to properties, okay? You will see the services disabled. Now, if I go to recovery here, take no action. By default, some of these services are set to restart the service. So in that case, you want to set them to take no action and hit apply. Other ways, the service will automatically restart when you restart your computer. Dependencies for that particular service would be TCP IP protocol driver. Okay. The following system co components depend on the service is none. Okay. So I happen to know what that service is. Now look at this one here is Brave Browser. It is set by default to manual. Recovery take no action. And you'll notice that when I highlight it, it'll give me a description of the particular service. Now, remote registry service, I would advise by default in Windows 10, it should be turned off. Now, years ago, it was left open. Prince Spooler can be used as a, an exploit, but a lot of people need it for their printers. I don't particularly need it for this. Now, remote registry settings one here uh, speaks for itself. Okay, the routing and remote access, I will be disabling, okay? So, remote registry, by default in Windows XP, Windows 7 was on. And if you think about the word remote, okay, it speaks for itself, okay? So, as a security information, you want to basically disable it. So, if that was on, how would you do that? You double-click it. And if it's set by manual or automatic, you set it to disable. You go to recovery here, it'll say first failure restart the service, take no action, 
take no action on hit apply and go back it's disabled and hit ok so you'll notice it's disabled ok now this one here I'm going to go to properties and I'm going to disable that one ok hit apply go to recovery and set it to take no action now to learn what services you turn off or turn on there is a website available called blackvapor.com now this one here would be for your printer now this also can be used as an exploit okay we can exploit and hack through a printer believe it or not if you're not using a printer disable it by disabling it it'll also give you security and it'll also give you more performance on your computer and hit apply and hit OK. Okay, so we're not going to go through all the services because it would be complicated. Now, system configuration. Okay, this would be what they call misconfig. There's two ways of getting to it. If you go here and you type in MSC ONFIT, you also can bring up the system configuration. Okay. Now on Windows 7 this was pretty handy. On Windows 7, if you got a virus, it would be sitting on startup. You will notice Windows 10 now is your startup is run by your task manager. But if you wanted to boot into safe mode, okay, Windows 10 is a lot trickier than Windows 7. Windows 7 computers, you restart, you tap the F8 key on the keyboard and you go into safe mode. The Windows 10 computers is slightly different. So you go to the boot sector and you would click safe mode here and you would hit apply. So when you restart, you can go into safe mode. When you finish doing what you want to do in safe mode by defragmentation your hard drive and tidying up the sectors on your hard drive, well then you would go back into this and click on tick safe mode and hit apply and I'll go back into normal mode okay so that's how you get in now these would be services okay that would be running on your Windows 10 computer so I can untick that one and it'll not start on startup I can also do it in task monitor and exit without restart because I'm, I'm actually showing you this, okay? System information. That would be your Windows Defender firewall and your Windows Memory Diagnostic. Okay, so if you're having problems with your memory, there's a number of ways you can check it out. Obviously, if your computer doesn't boot up your laptop and you know what you're doing, sometimes one stick of memory can be bad and your computer will not boot. So there is a few third party programs where you can run to test your memory and some computers you would tap the F1 key or F2 key for the day memory check. Sometimes when you remove one stick out on a boot up then it indicates it is the memory. Okay so to check your computer memory for problems I could click here. Some people may not have that option. Okay so that's a few computer tips to help people out with their computer problems. Now, you also have a number of tools built into your computer. And one in particular is called Disk Cleanup. Now, up again, if you go to the bottom, you type in Disk Cleanup. It's a tool designed to clean up. Okay, so if I open Disk Cleanup, it will give me the C drive, which is the, the main hard drive, okay, where the operating system is on. So I would click OK and here I will have disk cleanup. Temporary internet files. If I highlight it, it'll say the file contains web pages stored on your hard drive for quick viewing and etc. This one here, DragDax, cleans up uh, the graphics system which can speed up the application to load and response. Okay, so I want to highlight that one. This one is your, what they call your catch files. Optimization files or files previously downloaded to your computer can be deleted if you're currently delivering. Okay. Recycle bin. And Thunderbolts. 
Okay, this is a basically videos, copy of pictures and stuff, okay? So, I'm quite content because I know what I'm doing. I'm going through them all. So, I'm going to click clean up the system. Okay, it will take a few seconds. You can do this in safe mode. To be honest, it is the best option because you have a lot of programs running in the background. Okay, so I can, I can free up 7.11 megabytes of disk space on my computer. And I'm going to delete the files. Okay, because I'm happy enough and I know what I'm doing. So by running a disk cleanup, it can also give you a better performance on your system. Now, computer management. We're going to go to computer management here. Okay. Now this might be a bit technical for some people, okay? So, if I'm having problems with the hard drive and I want to format it and it's not shown, so, so for example, sometimes when you install a hard drive, for example, this particular computer, that would be my solid state drive, that would be a hard drive, and that would be a hard drive. So I have a number of storage devices, okay? So if one of these weren't shown and I happen to put a new device in, I can go to disk management by double clicking on it. So what will happen here is it will show me my hard drives. Okay. So this would be my operating system. That would be the recovery petition. Okay. So that would be one of the storage drives. So if I uh, deleted that volume. Okay. You will see nothing. So it will not show up. Okay, so you notice it hasn't shown up, okay? So, if I right click on it, and I click New Simple Volume, and I click Next, and Next, okay, I can assign any letter I want to it, I assign M, click Next. What it'll do is it'll format the hard drive, okay, so it'll be recognized, as you can see. So if I go back in, you will now see I've changed the hard drive to M. Okay, now, so these would be where your hard drive. So if you notice one here that is blanked out, if you right click on it, okay, I can change the path and I can also shrink the volume, which I'll cover at a later date. So just a few handy tools, friends, are sitting in front of you, built into your computer. Uh, just a small explanation of what exactly to do. I won't be going to that one because I won't be showing certain. Whereas that I've got my system set up for security reasons. So there's quite a lot of stuff here in your control panel. Some people know what they are and some people don't. Some people don't have a clue. Okay, just a small tip to help you out. Now, I have videos covered on networks, okay? But I also want to try and cover another video here now let me see if i can remember what well, this is uh this is like everything else and you learn over the years uh, it goes into your memory bank and sometimes it takes a while to pull it back out as you get older uh, okay so let me try this okay, so I'm going to ignore that. That's basically for checking errors for your hard drive, and that's for optimizing it. But there's a number of ways of doing it. Okay, so I'm looking for something here. It'll take me a second or two to find it. Uh, okay, that's for uh, optimizing your hard drives. So basically, it's like a filing cabinet, like a secretary, where she tidies all the books up in your library. And it pulls all the bad sectors from one hard drive to the other. Uh, there's 
use one of these and I'm looking forward to help you out. Now, by default, uh, a lot of files are hidden, okay? It's not a bad thing to show your hidden files, providing your system is in, is secure enough, okay, for yourself. Because there's a lot of stuff hidden that you wouldn't be able to find. And you can also search for drives and etc. on your system. Uh, what do we see now? Okay, so just a few basic uh, video tips, friends, to help you out if you run into problems with your computer. Now, if you're broadcasting and you're having problems with your sound, then you want to go to your control panel, okay? But if you go back to category, let me see if I can get just another better screenshot of this. If you just go to category, When you go to your hardware on sound, then you want to go to your sound. Now, most of the problems are caused by echoes, okay? Either if you're having someone else on and their system's up too high, it'll feed back and cause an echo, okay? So that would be, but you want to concentrate on their recording. So this would be this particular mic that I'm using. And I would go to levels. Now, if you have a boost on your mic, you want to make sure it's sitting about here and it's not turned up too high. Otherwise, you will get a feedback. Okay, so that's basically how you would control your mic, depending on what you're actually using. Now, if you're using a standalone desk mic and you do have a webcam plugged in, then you want to basically go in and you want to right click on it and disable it, okay? Otherwise, if you have two mics going, you're going to get a feedback. Okay, so that would be your sound. And these would be, if you're having a problem with your devices it will be highlighted okay okay friends just a small technolo technology information video okay you could probably call it tech help i call it technology information and hopefully that'll help help a lot of people out now if you right click on your desktop if you right click on your desktop you will have your display settings here and this would be Windows 10 you can turn on the night light which basically will kick on automatically and it will not be as strange as your eyes now there's quite a lot of stuff here I could cover but in one podcast it would be far too much and of course there's a lot of security expertise that you could use Okay, so there's an update here for the 2082. Okay, I'll install it once I finish with the podcast. If you click advanced here and you want to receive other updates from Microsoft, like a drivers and stuff like that, that's all by default you want to take that on. Okay. So I cover that one, or sorry, I'll install that once that's finished. If you want to find out what updates you've already had on your computer, if you go back here and you click the update history, if I double click this here, it'll open up a web page and it'll give me information on that particular update. A lot of people just get the updates and they don't care less. I like to understand what the update is, why they put that update out okay and this is how i would find out so what i've got is december the 8th 2020 and this would be the update number okay 
and that would be the build 190441 65 and etc it'll tell me the release date for the build for this that was a new operating system come out and it'll say on the 12th of the 8th 20 important adobe flash will go out of support okay so for me doing this here and going into more depth then i can understand more about it and explain it to you as a user in a simple term so this as we all get updates they're designed for a reason some are because someone has come across a vulnerability on windows 10 they've notified microsoft or etc and sometimes the security forces the fbi notify microsoft that they find it it depends who finds it okay although microsoft employ people for to look for bugs and holes and etc and flaws and report it then they get paid for it so these would be updates released in the past that would be for the server updates okay so that would give me more documentation you can also download updates manually if you know what you're doing okay to get windows 10 you can click here and check i want to buy a copy of windows 10 install it windows 7 or 8 i want to buy a copy of windows 10 for a mac switch your upgrade to windows 10 home or pro Let's see what price they're looking for Windows 10 at the moment. There are two ways to get Windows 10 checkers. Take a short quiz to help you. I'll give you the best way. Or purchase OS. Okay. So, <laughs> I don't have time to do it at the minute. Okay. Check for updates. Okay. So, if you're having problems with your Windows 10, it doesn't update. There is a few troubleshooting tools built into your operating system where you can run it to try and repair it. It can be a pain if you don't know what you're doing. Sometimes a troubleshooter works and sometimes it does not. But you have to basically recover the components, okay, which you can do by scripts and partial if you know exactly what you're doing. Okay, friends, so Hopefully this information will help someone out there that's maybe had a problem with their drivers. Okay. Now, you also can do online scans. If you can't afford it by third party programs, then obviously Windows 10 antivirus is pretty good and up to standard. Okay, so I don't want to go on too long because I could go into more things, hardware and etc. and really confuse people. Okay, so these are just basic, what I would call basic technology. Sadly, it depends on the level or the course that you would do online. Uh, if you're doing a computer course, yes, you'll probably learn how to use a computer to a certain extent, word processor, PowerPoint for demonstrations, and etc. or numbers and all for your business, but you'll not learn this sort of stuff on a basic computer course there's many avenues even of cyber crime okay uh, different ways and tools and methods they use to get access to systems so it's a different ball game and it can go in in depth okay so Thank you very much. Uh, if you have any problems, if you happen to be lucky and I'm on your Facebook, George, you can PM me. If you are unlucky, well then you can go to the Facebook tag page, just tag and leave your comments or you can go to YouTube under PC Kermon and you can have a look at the videos that we have covered in the past. Okay, thank you and keep safe.